the if the asset that you're giving that information to doesn't understand it because they're new. Um, because uh, as I understand, I might be wrong on this. There aren't any prereqs to having fly other than you know if you're blacklisted, you won't be able to um, because the fucking the admin won't let you. But that's that's another story for a different time. But that that's my point. Is there are no prereqs, right? Uh, it's preferable, but I'm not saying that you have to do it or you have to have that background to fly fixed wing or rotor wing. So as as a JTAC, or let's say that you're even an experienced pilot that knows nine lines out the wazoo, and you have a JTAC that's fairly new, um, and he doesn't if if he's, if he's giving you a screwed up nine line, then how are you getting around that? Hmm. I guess you have to talk with him, like, well... I'll tell you. No no nine lines and something like that, apparently. No, give him a nine line, um, but do it very, very generically and very rudimentary. Uh, I've, I've flown missions to where... I think I where, get it. Uh, I've flown missions, real-world missions, where JTACs are like, they're very experienced guys, but they're getting shot at from three different directions, and they're fucking struggling trying struggling. to get this information down. Uh, so what I usually do is I try to pull the information from them. Uh, and what I mean by pulling the information, let's say I'm I'm an, an A-10 overhead. I'm a very experienced pilot. I know how to use every system on my aircraft effectively, but my JTAC is so task saturated and he stressed the hell out that he doesn't understand. Like he can't convey the information that I need from him. I will pull that information from him. I'll ask him. You guys are taking contact from where? Give me a grid from where you're from where you're taking contact. Pop smoke from your location. All right, I will pull that information from him. I don't care about the target elevation. And if you guys are wondering, I linked a 9-line card, an official JPUB 3093 9-line card uh, in, in the bottom of the chat there. Um, but you'll reference that. And type 1, 2, 3 in control. Like, type 1, 2, 3 control. If the guy does not understand that, just tell him, I'm going to clear you for a single attack. Because obviously, as somebody that's a JTAC will know, what's a single attack used for in type control? What type control is for one single attack? Type, type one, one or two. Type type one or two, right? So I understand that. I, I will get that information from him. If JTAC does not know that, I'll say, hey, how many attacks do you want from me? Do you want type one or do you want one or two attacks? Do you want a continuous, you know, do you want me to strafe it, strafe it, strafe it, keep going? Or do you want me to give a single attack on this? Hey dude, I'm taking contact from the north. I just want one gun run. Okay, right then I know that I'm gonna be on a type two control possibly. Alright. He might not tell me that I am, but I, I can get that information from him. I know what he wants from me. Uh, Target elevation, I really don't care. Um, it, it's a good information to have, uh, if, you know, but if he's not effective in being able to tell you what type of control you're going to be getting, I can yeah, guarantee you that he's not going to tell you what your elevation is going to be. But what I do need to know is location. That's very crucial. And what you use with that is enemy grids. If I can just look on a map, fucking put my finger on that, and then no shit, give me a grid, that's great. It's, it works out perfect. If I can pop smoke, get visual on the friendly location, and then have them give me carnal direction to the enemy, that's even better. I wouldn't say even better. It's just as good. All right, because everybody, well, in some on a good day, you can generally see red smoke on the ground if you're in the air, right? So from that position, hey, I'm taking fire 300 meters to the north from my red smoke. I've already, I know where the friendlies are and I know where the enemy is. Uh, right then and there, you've got your target location and you've got your mark on or your target mark. All right, you've got the friendly smoke. Now you know where the friendly location is, and all I need to know is where he wants me to go afterwards. Hey, after this gun run, where do you want me to go? Okay, that just gave me my egress option right there. If he tells me to proceed back to the south because all the friendlies are moving to the north, then I already got my nine line essentially, right? Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Extremely useful for someone who doesn't know all these procedures, and you got him overhead. Exactly. So that that's ex ex type one, two, three. Like you know, I I told you guys about that doctorate level cast. A lot of the guys that went to the JTAC course heard me say that. You know, it's we're we're teaching at the, almost the elementary high school level right now uh, with communication. Type one, two, three control are all Gucci points, in my opinion. Using a SOFLAM, being able to paint a target is Gucci stuff. If you can get me eyes on the target in a very basic manner, then that's more effective. Uh, I would rather have that. Uh, the only other thing I would say is restrictions. All right, when when I'm pulling grids or if I'm trying to get a restriction out of my JTAC that doesn't know what the hell he's doing, 
uh, I'm going to ask him where he wants me to come in from. All right, where are you friend? Where is the friendly element at? If they're south of the enemy, I'm probably going to want to do east to west gun run, right? I'm not going to want to fly over the friendlies and shoot. So you're getting your restrictions. You're pulling this information off of them. And uh, this is basically what's called emergency cast. Uh, this happens on a day. I've had this happen maybe three or four times in the world, flying combat mission in Afghanistan, where like the JTAC was, they left them at the base because they weren't expecting to take contact or anything like that. They're just on a routine foot patrol. Next thing you know, this guy is on my radio frequency because I'm working with their S2 at, at the talk. And he's like, dude, I'm taking fucking fire from the east. I, I don't know. Like, he's basically trying to convey this information from him. I can get his grids and I can orient myself on the enemy and basically pull what's called emergency cast and get that information off of him. And emergency cast is essentially just getting the information from him from a non-qualified JTAC. Uh, because I can guarantee you, if I if I contact the ground force commander uh, in server and I ask him where the friendlies are, he's going to be able to tell me where they are, right? If I contact somebody that's got a good situational awareness or who's somebody who should know where the enemy is and where the friendlies are, I don't really need to JTAC at that point. I can just talk to the ground force commander, tell him where the friendlies are, tell him where the enemy is. Okay, tell your fucking dudes to get behind this grid line or to go no further north than this grid line. I'm going to be in from the east, danger close. All right, if you tell them danger close over the radio, I guarantee you they're going to be like, oh shit, I don't know what's about to happen, but I need to get behind some cover. You're just getting them into a mindset that, you know, shit's about to go down and you need to get behind some cover. Uh, that's emergency cast. I've done that three times where guys like a fucking fire team leader was on the radio with me. Dude, I'm taking fire from the north. I don't know how to call in an airstrike. Hey, dude, just chill out. Tell me where you are. Tell me where the enemy is. Mark a position where it's red smoke. All right, I found the enemy. We're going to be engaging him from the east. Keep your friendlies to the south. All right, that's very rudimentary stuff, but it gets the job done. And that's my whole point with trying to sound cool on the radio. Dude, just get the information out there. Who, what, where, when, how, why. Any questions? Can you give another example of this emergency uh, cast? Uh, yeah, e cast. Convoy hit an IED. The uh, <laughs> fucking their their squad leader was killed in Afghanistan. And I was basically flying overhead. We we're trying to help them out. There was basically a daisy chain IED with uh, three dudes, you know, with PKMs ambushing them from two different positions. And uh, from his grid, like, dude, I, I don't know where my grid is, but can you see the burning Humvee? Yeah, the contact. Okay, we're taking fires 300 meters to the east. Okay, cool. Because I guarantee if you look at your cockpit, even in a rotor wing aircraft in Arma, you're going to see a burning vehicle. All right. Yeah. Uh, so use what you can. Use visual aids. If I know that I'm on the north to south running MSR, hey, dude, I'm on the north south at running MSR through this town. Uh, I don't know my exact grid, but from the town, I'm about 200 meters to the south. We're taking fire from the town. What does that tell me right off the bat? Somebody that's been listening, please. Who, what, who, what, when, where, why? And... So just based off that general description, where are the friendlies? 300 meters. Uh, west? Yeah. Uh, 300 meters to the south. Oh, south, okay. On a north to south running MSR. If I'm flying at 1,000 feet, I can look down and see a north to south running MSR with the town. If I see Humvee to the south that's burning, then I'm going to be able to basically know where the friendlies are, right? Okay. And I can, I can orient my attack off of that and deconflict myself from the friendlies. All right, so it's very important that if you're going to do this type of cast or if your JTAC is very incompetent, that you pull that information from him. Tell me where you are. If you can't give me a grid, give me a visual marker. Um, so, ba so basically, like, smoke grenades. I mean, yeah, they got to use smoke to mark where they are. Smoke is perfect. You can use a visual talk on. You can use, I mean, anything. Anything. The whole point is to think outside of the box. If you don't have a smoke grenade and you need to get the eyes on, how are you going to do it? A landmarks also, right? A landmark? Yeah, that's good. Um, like if you could see a mountain, you can reference that. You know, from that mountain, I'm directly southeast of it or something of that nature. I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, those are very general descriptions, but like I said, you're going to have to think outside of the box with that. Somebody else had a question? Okay, moving on. More questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, how about, um, I don't know if Arma has it, because I'm kind of new to Arma, but not that new. At nighttime, 
do soldiers get like strobes and stuff that you can see them on their yeah, body? Yeah, that's perfect. IR strobes. Let's say that I'm in a helicopter and I've got MVGs, I've got Nogs on, and you've got an IR pointer on the on the tip of your rifle that you can point towards the enemy. Just know that the IR pointer goes both ways. I'm going to be able to see where your position is, and probably the enemy will too. But it's very easy for you to, I guess, orient yourself on the target. And uh, it, let's say I've, I focus on your laser, where the laser is coming from, and I actually didn't accidentally kill you. That's not really a good thing, right? Um, so what we do is what's called snaking, roping, or lassoing. Uh, so you have a technique that's called snaking. So from my position on the ground, let's say that I need to get the aircraft eyes on target, I'll basically make a snake pattern from my position to the enemy's location on the ground. That, that way they can see it. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, you also have what's called roping with the laser IR pointer where you basically point your rifle in the air and you make a rope or like you're lassoing the aircraft. You point your laser at the aircraft and you point it towards the aircraft making like a circular motion. That way they see it. Uh, I don't know if it, I've seen it done a couple of times. I've actually called in a Casavac with that method. It's very dependent on how competent the pilot is though. But oh, that can okay. go both ways. If if you're in a if you're in a uh, in a helicopter and you're trying to get eyes on the friendly location that's at night, you can't see smoke. They don't have IR strobes, but they have an IR pointer. Just tell them to point the fucking thing in the air, because <laughs> I guarantee you'll see it if you fly close enough to it. Uh, what else did I have? Brevity. All right, who can tell me what contact means uh, for a ground ground pounder type dude? For for an air crew or for on the ground? On the ground. Enemy. Enemy, right? Well, who can... I mean, not necessarily. I think a contact can be, hey, I saw something. It can be contact friendlies, contact enemies. Okay. You just see somebody. You see a person moving. Basically, what that means. You don't know who it is. Okay. Vehicle. So let's say that uh, I'm on the radio and I see con I hear contact front 300. There's enemies in front 300 meters. Okay. Maybe uh, not. Here. Maybe okay. it's friendly. I had to find my headphone and plug it in. Uh, contact can be defined specifically as what you're looking for. Um, generally, when you're calling in contact, that's an enemy that will take a shot at you. Um, though it's not used that way on the server. It's often used as um, just, uh, oh, hey, I see something. But really what people should be saying is, okay, there's an enemy ahead of us, or I'm observing, or I have eyes on X number of enemy targets. Contact means they're either going, they're either in the process of attacking you, or they're going to take a shot at you the second they see you, which is soon. It means okay. imminent, actual bullets flying. Okay. Uh, what does contact mean for somebody in the air? Let's say I'm an F-16 and I, I say, uh, what does contact and brevity in terms of air crew mean? That, that you see something? That you, no. you see a visual reference point that's a landmark or something of that sort. No. Is it more like if you see bullets flying at you while you're flying? No. No. It, uh, from my experience with Fluffer's JTAC course, I'm going to have to say it means that uh, they see the visual reference you just gave them. Exactly. Contact means that I see what you see. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that I'm taking fire. It doesn't mean that I'm taking, you know, it basically means, okay, you, what you're referencing, I, I contact what you see. That's essentially what it means. So uh, call Dokkan. Exactly. So let's say that I want to give them a visual talk on to a town in the middle of the city with the north to south running MSR, and I give them a visual talk on, you know, Hog 1 1 reference north to south running MSR. It, Three miles ahead of my position. Let's say that he has a say on my position. You're going to come across a town. Call contact. All right. I call contact once I see what he sees. All right. From that grid or from that position, go east 300 meters. You're going to see a rectangular building. Call contact. Hog 1 1 contact. Essentially, what it means is I see what you see. Two totally different definitions, right? Basically, this goes like GPS. You know, you're reference, referencing from point to point to target. 
it does yeah but it, it also means that i see what you see in in terms of air to air combat let's say that i have a bandit on my nose and we're interrogating we're trying to find that same target the the flight league gives me a bullseye call that says i you know the aircraft is at this position and i have an enemy contact at the position i'm going to say number 2 has contact or two contact 033055 i'm going to give him that i'm going to call tell him contact and i'm going to tell him where i see that all right so contact and uh, the context that it's used in air to air combat and ground combat is completely different. Uh, it's also meant to be a sensor contact, correct? So if I if I uh, have contact on the target only with my radar system or something. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Trying to find some good brevity because I'm gonna link you guys this and uh, like the JTEX or at least read it or even the actually more or less a fixed wing aircraft stuff that I see on a regular basis. Uh, continue. What does continue mean? This is used from uh, uh, calling IP inbound and then you at JTAC you clear him to continue from IP to target. Okay. Does that mean that I'm allowed to expend ordnance? That's a no-go. Okay, so if I say Hog 1-1 one, one continue, basically all I'm telling him is to proceed on that. I'm going to clear him hot or I might abort him, but just to con continue to press on to that, that you know, location. Uh, let's see. Question. Mm -hmm. Would you use continue if it was a type 1 and you know he's IP inbound but you don't have eyes on him yet? Uh, sure, yeah, you can. That's the definition for contact and area of brevity. One second, guys. Uh, who can tell me what mud means? Sorry, muck or mud? Mud. M-U-D. Mike Uniform Delta. You lost me on that one. Anybody? No? Mud means that it's a surface-to-air threat. Alright, uh, so generally what I tell... I mean, you wouldn't really ever tell a JTAC this, but if you're engaged, defensive, meaning that you are defending a, a known enemy... Uh, you're going to identify whether it's like, you know, a triple-A piece or a radar-guided missile or heat-guided missile. Um, MUD basically means that I've got a indication on my, on my radar warning receiver, which I know you guys have in-game, that I'm being locked. Uh, that's usually a good good thing to tell within your flight. Hey, I've got MUD left 9 o'clock, 300 meters, or, or not 300 meters, 3 nautical miles, defending to the west. All right, that basically means I've got a radar contact on the to the uh, to the west of my position. I'm flowing to the east or some, some sort of uh, effect or something of that nature. Sorry. Uh, Sparkle. You guys know what sparkle means, right? Yep. Alright. I mean, I know it. I think oh, it's... Go ahead and tell me. Sparkle basically means it's an IR pointer on the ground, or your IR pointer. Here, I'll give you the actual definition. Uh, and it's a good, I guess, Gucci point type thing if you want to use uh, for your friendlies. Hold on. And how is Spark used? Your IR pointer. Remember, I was showing you how to, to rope and yeah. lasso. Or, so or would snake? that be just sparkle just the target? One, one, sparkle have, the target. Okay, okay. Lays. All right. So there's a big difference between lays and sparkle. Who can tell me what the difference is? 
Laziness. Well, Go ahead, over. Well, Overlord. I was gonna say, I assume a laze is an actual uh, target designation for a uh, laser guided weapon. Okay. And then a sparkle is just a uh, marking method. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I hear a lot of guys that are like, yeah, I'm lazing the target. Okay, are you using an IR pointer? Or... I've had one mission where I told him to blaze the target, and or I'm sorry, to sparkle the target, and he started lazing it. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Uh, just sparkle and laze are very common terminologies that get mixed up. I just know that lazing is designating a target, and sparkling is uh, pointing a target for like a laser pointer. So, also, could you, another question, would you say something like, uh, Hogwan 1, I have eyes on your sparkle, maybe? Mm-hmm. Okay. Your contact sparkle. Would okay. that, how, how would sparkling be used during the day? It wouldn't, because you okay. wouldn't put MVGs on there in the day, would right. you? No, all right, just making sure that I wasn't missing something. Oh, also, spot, spot on, it's not very commonly used around here. Using with uh, lasers, I think I instead of spot, uh, lasing, you won't you won't see spot in in the armor. Isn't that used for when the laser is on? The laser is on, and I'm searching for it. So let's say like in oh, DCS, if, if I'm in DCS, target. yeah, if I'm on DCS and I I want to get another aircraft on my posi or the, my target, I will. Uh, Basically, yeah, uh, laser that target and have them spot it with their with their targeting pod. It, it's modeled in DCS. It's not modeled in Arma. It's a good asset. Or it's a good tool to use if I need to turn a laser on and then get another aircraft on that position. Yeah, sure, it works great. All right. So the good terminology for that is Hog one one lasing one one four four. You know, Hog one two spot means I see your laser. All right, Hog one one, tell me what you see. Uh, you give them a general description of the area. All right, so I'm initiating two-way communications between, between the flight based off of what he thinks he sees. That way I can confirm it. Sweet. You can use that terminology, not really that specific terminology, but that method for basically anything. If I'm giving a visual talk on and I want to make sure that I, he, we're on the same page, I will give him a general dir or direction to that target, have him get eyes on. So let's say that north to south running MSR with the town in the middle, the compound's east 300 meters. I will tell him to go east 300 meters and t tell me what he sees as far as the compound. If he tells me, if, if I'm looking for an L-shaped compound and he, sees, and he tells me he sees a T-shaped compound, obviously we're not on the same page, right? Right. Uh, that's a list of NATO brevity codes. I'm not going to go through all of them. I went through some of the ones that I thought were uh, important. Uh, the other one I would say is continue dry. Same thing as continue. Basically, ordinance of release is not authorized. Uh, if I tell them continue dry, it basically means go through your really you go through your motions of attacking that target and basically do not engage it. So I can make an, uh, like a strafing run type geometry, but I will not engage the target. Make sense? Makes sense. So, like, let's say that friendlies are moving up to this compound, we're about to assault it, and I have an air asset going in, uh, and I tell them continue dry basically means fly over that target, don't in, don't expend ordnance. Is this used to test the flight path? Yeah, if you want to make sure that the guy's on the right, you know, the right final attack heading. If he says, I'm in from the east heading 270, that means he's going east to west heading 270. I can tell him continue dry basically means fly over that, or continue that same run over the target area. A continue dry basically mean, also means that it's not necessarily an abort. It means that I want you to fly that geometry towards that target and then not expend ordnance and go back and do it again. And generally, I do that to make sure that they're competent and they copied the information right. Uh, most of the time, I'll clear them hot, though. So the difference between continue and continue dry is that the pilot already knows that he 
doesn't deliver yeah, any yeah, armament. Exactly. Continue means that I'm, you're on a final attack hitting. I'm continuing, continuing, continuing. I'm expecting a cleared hot, or I'm expecting an abort. Continue dry means fly fly that same same geometry and then break off uh, after your attack would normally be what your. Uh, I'm sorry, what your attack normally would look like. So they Correct. they have to say in and out. In that case, mm -hmm. they're always going to say that. If I give him the nine line and I tell him to call in with direction, I'm expecting him to go wings level to on that final attack heading, and I'm going to either con tell him to continue dry or cleared hot or continue. Means I'm going to press, press, press. Let's say that he's got a long wes or weapons engagement zone, and he has a long envelope to employ that ordinance, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see what happens if that target moves. I tell him continue. I can tell him continue. And if I tell him, you know, if it gets to the point where a terminal release has to happen or it needs to abort, he's either going to tell me off dry or I'm going to tell him to re return back or uh, immediate reattacks authorized. All right. So two different, uh, very different uh, definitions there. Continue dry basically means fly over the target as you normally would with the same ge attack of geometry. I'm not going to clear you hot. Just continue that attack run, uh, and then proceed to the north. You're not authorized to expend ordnance. Continue means continue to uh, proceed on that flight path. Expect a cleared hot and abort. Obviously, an abort. So I'm sensing that uh, in this situation, I guess in a ARMA application, it would be uh, say you're at the start of the mission. You're calling in your first cast of the mission with several more to go, and uh, you've never seen this guy fly before and you want to uh, confirm that he's not a total ass fuck, you would have the first run he does be a uh, dry run. Yeah, unfortunately, if he's a complete quote-unquote ass fuck, he's not going to know what continue dry means, which you're going to have to explain to him over the radio. But just okay. tell him, all right, the, I'm going to give you a continue dry call means I want you to fly that final attack heading but not employ ordinance. And you're, you just set up that verbal contract with him even before he takes off and say, this is what, you know, cleared hot, continue dry, and abort. It's just establish that. And that's really the purpose for this course, right, is to get you guys all on the same page. So now when you get into the server and let's say Gabe is controlling Albatross who's flying, and I tell him continue dry, he's going to know what that means. Okay. What's the difference between capture and tally? Capture basically means that I have identified. Well, in in the brevity uh, the brevity handbook the definition is quote aircrew has identified and able to track specific air to ground target with onboard sensor. All right, and tally. Or, I'm sorry, you said captured and what? Tally. Tally means <laughs> uh, they're really the same definition. <laughs> Okay. Uh, basically means I see a bandit, uh, or I visually acquired it. Um, that's really what it means. Uh, captured means that I am locked onto this target on the ground, right? So if I'm following a vehicle, I am captured that target. I'm going to track that target as long as I can with my onboard sensors. Tally means I'm looking out the window, and I can see that T-shaped building out the window. Got it. Uh, Are we going to be able to practice today? Or is it just classroom, like you said? It's, this is just classroom, dude. Um, if you guys want to go and hop in the training server, I can go in there with you guys and we can run some drills if you guys really want to. Because I'm more of a, uh, how you say it, like, I like guy. doing it. Yeah, yeah you guys like want to go? Do it to, to... I can fire up a uh, training server if you guys want. Instead of uh, listening, because I'm probably forget this later. I remember some of the things you said, but not all of it. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I need, like to, I said, I need there, to learn by my mistakes. This is, like I said, the whole point of this course is just not, it's not really even a course, it's more or less a discussion. It's a two-way discussion between with you guys to try to get an SOP established for CAS and uh, aircrew comms. Um, and all I'm doing is just giving you guys a general overview of how I do it. This is, like I said, it's not it's not a course that you're going to get a tag for. It's just a you know generally increasing your situational awareness about how to improve your communications within uh, Arma. Um, because I could I could sit here and teach you I could I could teach a whole JFire course because I I do teach it on a regular basis with all my material at work, and it probably would take me roughly about two weeks. At five dollars a day to teach you guys how to have proper air crew communications like to the T. But we don't have that luxury. 